Hello guys, welcome back to my channel once again here on YouTube. We're in the month of October and you know what that means, don't you? It's Bound for Glory season. My favourite event of the year in wrestling. Bound for Glory, TNA Impact. Today I thought I'd uh, give you all a review of the 2013 Bound for Glory. Um reason I chose this one is because it was one of the last not not decent ones but one of the last ones that had a lot of star power and um, yeah and it was, it was Sting's last um, Bound for Glory as well so it kind of meant it, it holds a special place in my heart kind of thing so let's take a look at the cover then so this is a Queensway release we have um, the main event at the top with AJ Styles versus Bully Ray for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Got a nice golden uh, Bound for Glory uh, logo there as well, which looks cool. And in the in the foreground we have Gail Kim, Chris Saban, Manic or Suicide or whatever you want to call him, uh, Gunner, Magnus, Jeff Hardy, Sting, Cowboy James Storm, Kurt Angle. Bobby Roode and Brooke Tessmacher there as well. So yeah, this was a 15 certificate here in the UK. Uh, as it says at the top, TNA World Heavyweight Championship, which is pretty cool. And there's the there's the spine. Got AJ Styles at the top there. Two disc set. Let's have a look at the discs a sec. They're completely different. These two. So disc one with the uh, with the event on has the the main event is AJ Styles and Bully Ray. And then there's all those I I mentioned just now that are in the foreground on the front cover on the second disc. I always liked the way that Queensway uh, presented their DVDs when they were um, distributing for um, TNA back back in these days, back in this these years. There you go, look, Queensway. Also, Clear Vision they were under as well, which I think was like a sister company of Silver Vision. Runtime of 4 hours 48 minutes. So, it's the biggest event of the year as out of the contract sorry out of contract AJ Styles takes on Bully Ray for the TNA World Heavyweight title after making an enemy of TNA president Dixie Carter could Styles feel her wrath at Bound for Glory the friendship between Sting and Magnus is sure to be tested as they meet in the ring it's a huge night for Kurt Angle as he will be inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame and then he has to face off against Bobby Roode. So yeah, we'll have a quick look at the extras a second. We had Before the Bell, which I enjoy watching uh, with the build-up to a you know Bound for Glory. If I'm going to watch a DVD like this, for example, I always watch the Before show, like the pre-show there, here, like Bound for Glory pre-show, and like the Before the Bell documentary. This also contains fan interaction recap, post-match interviews, music video, and then the Hall of Fame with uh, Kurt Angle in. Got various screenshots there. We got Robbie E of the Bromance uh, put putting a sleeper hold on Gunner. Got Kurt Angle there. Got ODB, I think that is. Throw in, could be Gel Kim. Do apologize if I've got that wrong, it's really hard to see that one. Got Sting against Magnus on that one. And then the main event Bully Ray and AJ Styles there. And there they are again on each side of the uh case. As I said, I, I really like the uh the time and effort that Queensway put into these cases these covers, these cover arts. And uh I've I've praised them before for it. Well, let's get into the show now. So we kicked things off with an Ultimate X match for the X Division Championship. 
We had Manic versus Austin Aries versus Chris Sabin versus Jeff Hardy versus Samoa Joe. I'm going to give us some spoilers away for this so I can um, explain a bit more my opinions on that guy. So giving you that warning now. Sorry about that. So yeah, we had Jeff Hardy and Austin Aries in a in another Bound for Glory match a year later after their main event world title match at Bound for Glory uh, 2012. And uh, this one was pretty cool. I did enjoy this. Jeff Hardy was dressed in all white and he kind of looked like someone out of an insane asylum. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff, but that's just that's just what came to mind when I saw you in this match. Yeah, it was a very high-flying match, as you would expect for, for uh, Ultimate X. Very enjoyable indeed. Um, Chris Sabin picking up the victory, becoming X Division champion which was pretty cool. We had um, a TNA World Tag Team Championship match. James Storm and Gunner took on the pre-show match winners out of uh, Bad Influence, Park and EY, The Bromance and Chavo and Hernandez. It was uh, The Bromance, uh, Robbie E and Jesse Goddard who picked up the victory to earn themselves the tag title shot against Storm and Gunner. I wouldn't say it was a good match. It was, I've seen better tag matches. I would have preferred um, Storm and Gunner to have gone against um, Bad Influence, maybe. We had um, Sting coming out with his sunglasses on, no face paint, um, presenting Kurt Angle with the Hall of Fame watch, which was quite interesting. I did like that. There's a match that's not listed on here that took place as well. We had um, EC3 from Carter III making his TNA debut against, I think the guy was called Norv Furnham or something. A really tough opponent for EC3, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, this was uh, EC3's debut here, which is pretty cool. And um, I started to take a liking to EC3. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, obviously EC3 struggled to win that match. <laughs> we had... Um, sorry, the focus has gone a little bit there. Let's try and move it in a bit. So we had uh, TNA Knockout Championship match. ODB versus Gail Kim versus Brooke Tessmacher. And Brooke, at this time, had aligned herself or associated herself, if you will, with uh, Buddy Ray and the Aces and Eights. And uh, this match was okay, I guess. Gail Kim picked up the victory with help from Lady Tapper, I think it was. We had Kurt Angle versus Bobby Roode. So this is like a rematch of their 2011... Uh, I think it was that one. 2011 um, main event, or semi-main event, or whatever it was, for the world title. TNA world title back then. I didn't think this one was as good as their 2011 match. Uh, Bobby Roode managed to pick up the victory here this time. But I thought to myself, I really wish that had happened for him uh, back in 2011 in their match. Because the build-up to, to that Bound for Glory was so incredible and so enjoyable. It actually made me believe that Bobby Roode was actually going to do it. He was going to beat Kurt Angle, become TNA World Heavyweight Champion on that night. But obviously everything was overshadowed by the Hogan versus Sting match of Bound for Glory 2011. But yeah, it, like I said, it was an okay match, but not as good as the 2011 uh, encounter with the two. We had Magnus versus the icon Sting next. Um, Sting rocking this awesome t-shirt with his face on but had a union jack face paint which was pretty cool you know respecting magnus and a lot of people seem to overlook this match thinking it's quite shit and i don't think it was I, it, it was good it's like a passing of the torch kind of thing and sting you know let magnus pick up the w over him and he ta yeah, he tapped out to his own um, finishing move as well. So I think Magnus picked up the victory with the Scorpion Deathlock, if I'm not mistaken. 
So yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, fair play to Sting for doing that as well. But yeah, Magnus, at this point, I don't think a lot of people were getting behind him. And obviously within the next six months or so, he would become... Or it might have been the next three months, sorry. He would become TNA World Heavyweight Champion. And a lot of the stars started to leave at the end of this year. And to, like the beginning of 2014. So TNA were trying to um, create new star power. In You know, just as my opinion anyway. But yeah, and then finally obviously he went on years later to become... NWA World Heavyweight Champion and have that ridiculously long reign as World Champion until recently and he lost to Trevor Murdoch. But that, that's um, that's a different story altogether. Let's get back to this. Main event time, we have Buddy Ray of the Aces and Eights defending his World Heavyweight Championship against AJ Styles. AJ Styles has started to go on this kind of dark personality now wearing dark clothes starting to grow out his hair long it was pretty interesting and uh, of course he was out of contract as well and he was wrestling without a contract for TNA and Dixie Carter was trying everything she could to make sure that AJ Styles wouldn't pick up the victory become TNA world heavyweight champion and um, take the title away from the promotion and we had uh, <laughs> Aces and Eights members coming out interfering. We had Buddy Ray turfing up the, the ring in the corner, as he keeps doing in some of these uh, pay-per-views. And exposing the board, you know, the wooden board or whatever, underneath the, uh, the ring apron. And trying his best to body slam or just do any maneuver he could on AJ Styles on the exposed board of the ring. We had um, Dixie Carr coming out to help as well, help Bully Ray, giving him a chair to use. Anything she possibly could to make sure, or anything Bully Ray could do to retain that title. But as uh, as things turned out, it wouldn't um, it wouldn't be Bully's Ray, Bully Ray's night as um, AJ Styles managed to overcome the odds and become TNA World Heavyweight Champion. I think if this was only, it was kind of storyline, but kind of real. But if it, if it was all storyline, I would have enjoyed it more. But knowing that AJ Styles had, in fact, you know, were, or was le about to leave the company, it kind of upset me a little bit. And I don't know, it's really hard for me to explain my feelings on it, really. I, I did enjoy the match though, it was a good match. I, I think Buddy Ray should have retained though. And then just let AJ, you know, piss off the where, wherever he was going at that point. Because I don't think he went straight to um, WWE then, did he? He went to Ring of Honor. I think, I'm pretty sure he did. Uh, not long after this. But yeah, so that was that. That was that main event. And then uh, this was near enough the uh, getting near the end of uh, Aces and Eights, I think it was. Pretty sure they they were coming to an end as a faction. It was a shame because I also loved them as well. They were a good um, good faction, probably the best faction that that TNA have uh, ever had. Just my opinion, though, guys. But yeah, so all in all, with all these extras, lovely artwork. Uh, an okay-ish kind of pay-per-view. I did like the pre-show. That was quite fun. A good build-up to it, as always with these Bound for Glories. And, or well, most of them anyway, because some of them don't have the uh, extras on. But anyway, let's go with a score. I'm going to give this one 7.5 out of 10. I, For some reason in my mind, I thought it was better uh, than, than, what it, than what it was. For some reason, rewatching it again, it it just didn't seem to be as fun. I don't. It's really strange. I can't really explain it. But yeah. So here we are then, guys, in Bound for Glory season. I might review another one or two this month of Bound for Glory because it's my favourite uh, event of the year. Sadly, it's got worse over the years, kind of. 
Well, some of them have been good in recent years, but some of them just dip downhill as well. I'm not a fan of like 15, 16 much. But I think since uh, Callis and uh, Scott Demore have took over, they've um, they've really improved the product. I'm trying to get it all back on track again and try to do something different as well, which is really cool. Anyway, guys, enough of me droning on. Thank you very much for joining me for this today. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you want me to pick another Bound for Glory for you to review. Uh, for me to review for you, sorry, guys. And I'll do that. Or if I don't get any uh, replies for that, I'll just randomly pick my next one myself. There's, some, there's a few interesting ones there. There's like um, my favourite one, 2011. There's the... You know the uh, the ugly sister of Bound for Glory, the twenty fourteen one, which a lot a lot of people like. And then we got, I got I like twenty eighteen's uh, one, and then not a lot of people like twenty seventeen. That's a pretty good one as well. But yeah, I've, I've got them all anyway. So you let me know which one you you want me to review, and keep an eye out in the next few weeks for the uh, Bound for Glory predictions video. Anyway, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Take good care of yourselves, guys. Peace.